Hey there! Welcome to season 2 of Race the Brow with Nishka and Malaika. If you've been with us through season 1 and are still here, then hey, we love you. And if you're new here, then welcome, welcome, welcome. This season, we have lined up stories of some kick-ass Indians from across the globe who are reshaping our Indian society by being who they are. Because, you know, f**k lo kya bolenge. This season, we are also bringing in some experts on relationships, love, sex, life, and everything that happens in between. So, we hope you enjoy this episode as much as we have enjoyed putting it together. Hey, Dipti. Welcome to our podcast, Raise the Brow with Nishka and Malaika. Hi, Dipti. Hi. How are you doing? Very good. Nice. I like the kind of enthusiasm on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saturday night for me, so I'm very enthusiastic. But Sunday morning, <laughs> different enthusiasm. I guess this is the most exciting your Saturday night can get during the party. Um, yes, it is. You are so right. In fact, I was talking to somebody else an hour back. And she's like, you have a podcast recording in an hour? I was like, yeah. And she's like, it's a Saturday night. I'm like, exactly. It is the best thing because I can't go out. I can't do anything. So this is literally the highlight of my weekends. (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) Hey, I mean, it helps when you love your work, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Um, Yeah. So Dipti, is this your first uh, podcast? Uh, No, this is my second, actually. Damn. (laughs) <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> Nishka is nice. on this mission to make sure that most of our guests are either in their first or second podcast with us. Okay, uh, at, least, so at least top three. Yeah. Uh, the last time she went as far as going, oh, so we're your first, and our guest was very confused. The guest was like, uh, what are we talking about anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a mission. Yeah. The guest. Yeah, the guest thought we're talking about her podcast when she doesn't even have a podcast. And she was like, oh, I don't have a podcast. And we're like, yeah, we know that. (laughs) So, yeah, it was all kinds of cute. So, for our listeners and viewers who are tuning into this right now, Dipti is an all-star, in our opinion. Uh, So, she is a mental health professional who specializes in transaction analysis and to top it all, she is super fashionable. So anybody looking for fashion tips, you know who to who to DM and harass after this. So, <laughs> so Dipti, today we are going to um, discuss your journey with atopic dermatitis and also how you have cultivated an entire life of self-love, self-awareness, identity, all while navigating this big bad world which is obsessed with skin and hair so yeah we are excited so to begin can you tell us what atopic dermatitis is and how did you get diagnosed with it sure so um atopic dermatitis is uh, an acute skin condition uh, which is characterized by extremely uh, dry itchy skin and um, you usually get it uh, you're usually born with it and it goes away uh, when you hit puberty but it can also um, you can also have an onset at in puberty and then it can be a lifelong sort of illness there is no cure for it it's only about managing it um i did have sensitive skin as a child as a baby uh and then i sort of grew out of it in boarding school but uh like I mentioned, when I was 19, I had, I had, I am from Bangalore, so I was here for a wedding, and um, I had a, a little rash that I went to check out with the, the dermatologist, and I was administered the wrong dosage of medication, which by the time I went back to Chennai, where, where I was doing college at the time, uh, I was covered head to toe um, in this uh, red, uh, itchy rash that uh, has sort of stayed with me ever since mm-hmm. what are the so what are the triggers like for the dermatitis today and how have they changed over the last 10 years i assume of having it 
so i think uh, as with any illness you have to really listen to your body and sort of figure out uh, what works for you what doesn't uh, so for me over the years i've realized that stress is definitely uh, one of the biggest triggers uh, followed by lack of sleep um some foods uh unfortunately uh dog hair um because uh, i love dogs and um also alcohol uh so these are some of the things that i have to be very careful about and um getting in good exercise making sure i sleep well and as far as possible minimizing stress is so hard <laughs> yeah yeah it's like one of those uh cycles right like you know stress aggravates and you also get stressed and does that happen to you often do you fall into All a cycle time. i mean if i'm in a so if i'm in a like i mentioned i do have flare ups when i am triggered and um, i do go into a complete meltdown and it's like being back to square one because you're like why has this happened to me then you're sad about it that further aggravates it because you you're mentally yeah. not feeling okay and uh, so it's a cycle so you really have to break out of it and you know take charge and which i mean i still cry i still allow myself to sort of feel yeah. sorry for myself yeah. and yeah. wallow in self pity and then you just have to get up and get going after that yeah you make it sound very easy i'm, I'm sure oh, it's, no, not. it's not oh no it's not i mean <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's not a challenge yeah so let's dig deep into about so when the day you got time you got diagnosed you are 19 you go back to college in chennai and you are now facing this life changing situation which you are still coming to terms with because right? you have no idea what it is you don't not sure how it's going to manifest in your entire lifetime and you're also 19 like we're all babies then we have no idea what's happening in the world so How was it to go back to an environment like that? What were your classmates and friends like? How did they respond and react? So uh, it was I mean it, it happened so suddenly that um, I was sort of thrown into the deep end. Mm-hmm. Um and I I couldn't sleep at night so uh, I used to go I mean I used to practically make it to college and then sleep uh, the whole day in class. but i i remember the first uh, day that i actually came back to college uh, i mean when the the first day that i can vividly remember where i came and this was me um i realized uh, that a lot of people didn't want to sit on the same bench as me uh, cuz they thought it was communicable cuz it was very visible you know and um so uh, that's the day i actually met uh, my bestest friend <laughs> uh because she was the one who actually came and sat next to me and up until then she thought i was some mean girl from bangalore and she's from small town calcutt so she avoided me like the plague up until then so naturally <laughs> it's a very bangalore perception <laughs> yeah so you see um today when anybody looks at you on instagram or any other platform you are dancing you're strutting you're like radiating joy but tell us how do you practice confidence on a daily basis for uh, i'm just like the person the any other person i have yeah. a lot of insecurities about the way i look um but i think what i constantly tell myself and uh, i've really had a very supportive family who's never let me feel that you know there's something wrong with me or uh, I can't do something because of the way I look so that gave me a lot of permission from uh from when this started that I'm I'm yet yeah, I'm still free to do what I want so I think that has helped me and I realized that you know if I'm going to wait for the day that uh, I have perfect skin and perfect hair I'm going to miss out a lot on life So that's when I was like okay if I like dressing up I like dressing up so you know I may not have perfect hair or the, or perfect skin but that doesn't stop me from being myself and dressing up and I love dancing and jumping all around the place so I've I've not let that stop me but at the same time if I'm having an off day and I just want to be in my pajamas and if I'm having a flare up and I just want to sit at home I do that as well because I think that's equally important to to uh, say that you know 
it's not every day is not a walk in the park mm-hmm. you you do have bad days and it's okay to say that and it's okay to like take a breather yeah i think that's important for and that's a lesson for everybody right that all of us have these crap days where you just don't feel like your best self and those days you have to love yourself even more and be like you know what if staying away from people being by yourself or doing whatever is what is going to get you into that self love mode then do it mm-hmm. and not feel guilty about it so yeah. so important yeah but uh, uh, you know what tishka said is actually remarkable because um i mean not to put this in very simple terms but you know given that it's a constant struggle you still find so much happiness which i don't think even the average individual is able to very often you know just to be able to let themselves be let themselves be themselves on especially social media where we're constantly it's so you know scared of being judged and uh, you know for an average individual it's such it's such a uh, you know vicious cycle to go to lecture do it right now should i be myself on social media and then going through your instagram page at which then i had this conversation and you know a couple of friends who have also shared your page with and they're all just like oh what is really stopping us and then this whole debate of what's really stopping us from just you know being ourselves but um, to kind of build on you know what you were speaking of your um, parents and your sister your family have been a big support in you know your whole journey up until date so from your experience but also you know professionally speaking what role does um, your family play in shaping a person's identity uh, so I first think, from your person uh, any any school of psychology would will mostly speaks about uh, the impact of your childhood years on your identity as an adult uh, 0 to 7 to be specific in transactional analysis um my mom is a practicing psychologist and i think uh, what she did for us uh, and continues to do for us is uh, there's a lot of uh, open conversation at home there's a lot of support and uh, to put it uh, very bluntly you at in our house we call a spade a spade we are not afraid to have difficult conversations in fact we have it more often than not um a simple thing that we we were all going to the mall deeds in december and uh, in the middle of the night my mom realizes that we are all on the same flight and she's like what if something happens to us she had like all all the wills in place and she like kind of given that and i mean i don't know how many people do that before a holiday <laughs> i mean my mind was on all these but but she yeah. was like you know so everything's always um we talk about things that are not, that are hard to talk about but need to be spoken about and i think um that has really helped and i know for sure that if it if i wasn't in the family that i am in i would have never been able to deal with this the way i have been able to for us your family absolutely <laughs> to them just build a little bit about that because you said you know we as a family call it as it is a spade is a spade so even in your interactions and you know let's put this out as your suggestion or your advice to people who are listening that um, if you see a friend or if you see someone in your family who you know potentially has something that's going on that is different or they don't understand is it always preferable to ask or address it or kind of you know uh pretend everything is normal and kind of walk around the matter skirt around it and let the other person bring it up that is there a any kind of advice on that i mean how do you prefer it let me put it that way let's not generalize so i think um the kind of person i am i uh the word confrontation has always scared me because i'm a person who likes to believe that everything is uh like fairy land but it's not and uh, this has really helped me uh cuz i feel the more you avoid something the bigger it becomes but mm-hmm. however difficult it is to address it and talk about it it actually um creates a lot of uh, intimacy with the person 
because i think we all engage in a, a lot of pseudo intimacy with friends with family where we we are really afraid to say what we think and i've i'm slowly uh, beginning to learn and i've definitely uh, and my mom is definitely a role model in this that true intimacy is actually being able to tell someone that look this is not looking okay and uh and not be rude or be um vicious about it but to just say just to just to address it i think that is true intimacy and if you are looking to uh cultivate that it's it's baby steps trust me you know mm-hmm. you are at risk sometimes yeah. you are at risk of losing that relationship or true. making it uncomfortable <clears throat> but i think if you uh, really cultivate it the kind of intimacy you build with people and the kind of relationships <clears throat> you end up having mm-hmm. both friendships or um, romantic relationships or whatever it is uh, there's a great uh, value add and there's a great difference in that so i would encourage it perfect um beautiful um tracking back a little bit to what you said earlier that you know you do have bad days everyone does you're just slightly more actually physically and mentally taxing but um you did mention that if you're having a bad day you take that bad day you, know, you obviously bounce back the next day but okay take your moment but then uh, how do you do it what do you do for you know either putting your mind at re- uh, peace or some self love or just you know compassion to yourself on those days so i think uh, what's equally important is while i believe it's really important to be positive and to you know i think it's important also to not fake it and it's important to to acknowledge that everyone has bad days and that's okay uh, but what i do is first of all i cry for me crying is like uh, a huge release uh, and i just have to let it out um i call a friend uh, i mean i usually call my best friend i talk about how the world has been so horrible to me and uh, whatever um i might eat two or three or four scoops of ice cream uh and i <laughs> crack a really bad joke because my name is deep tea i love a cup of tea and that really makes me feel <laughs> much better Uh, I'm gonna never forget that. that. <laughs> Chai is an emotion at the end of the day, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> And I think I, uh, I mean, there are some days that I just want to sit, sit in my bedroom in my PJs and not come out. And I think when I, when you give your yourself the permission to do that, like, look, it's okay. Uh, and I come from a family where. Um, people are high achievers so you know everyone's always on the run uh my mom starts her day at 5 am with client calls so there's a lot of really uh yeah so and i for me any time before 7 is like are you kidding me like <laughs> You know, I'm fairly certain a lot of our listeners are going to be like seven. That's also <laughs> quite early in the day. I like how you say seven. Like that's late enough to be like, oh, you know, everyone else is such an overachiever. <laughs> oh my God, I've taken a long. I mean, it's taken me many years to say, you know, uh, seven is okay. And then I keep reading these things about how successful people are hustling when everyone else is sleeping, and I'm like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where does that leave me? Where does that leave all of us? <laughs> I actually read something about how that is, you know, this entire ideology is actually so toxic. The 5 a.m. club that actually puts yeah. pressure on people who are not performers in the morning, and then they are waking up and actually underperforming because they're like, we actually can't do anything at this time. So yes, <laughs> by 7 a.m. I have all my emails. I have all. So um, since my mom is also my boss. on uh whatsapp she would have had like t- all these things you know just waking up and there's like so much to already do wow <laughs> you know allowing yourself a bad day is the honestly it's the slightly easier part because you know you're letting yourself be you're letting yourself let's say vegetate and do what you want to do and not push through your day so to speak right 
how do you come out of that though how do you wake up the next day and say that okay i've had my moment or you know as beyonce says you had your 5 minutes to cry now get up and move on that get up and move on how does that happen so i think over the years i've learned uh, so i think this is an important uh, point to make that there's a difference between uh, self comfort and self sabotage so self comfort is where you're like okay i'm 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 not feeling so good i need to relax let me have a glass of wine and then self sabotage when you finish the entire bottle and you can't wake up the next day so it's a very fine line yes uh, and you can tell yourself that okay i'm i'm really not feeling good i need the second glass and i need the third glass uh but i think what i've learned over the years is that it's okay to give yourself that and then to really take charge and say okay you've had this now it's time to get up and move and i think what really helps me in that is i really enjoy uh, working out so um and i really truly believe that um the endorphin release definitely helps the mind whatever you're doing uh, i do yoga as well as um like hit workout so uh i think it's it's hugely beneficial like all the every ev- i mean everyone talks about it but i really really uh, found it to be very helpful or even just going for a walk just getting some movement in i think it really helps yeah actually quite a few health mental health professionals always propagate that saying that do it 15 20 minutes of any movement because that hormone release helps you so much it's unparalleled and yeah, i think and i'm a huge uh, believer in it So uh Diti let's get a little deeper into your profession which is transaction analysis. Can you tell us what transaction analysis is? So it was a it's a school of uh, psychology started by Eric Byrne in San Francisco Nishka. <laughs> And um what I really um I mean what really attracted me to it uh is that it believes that every individual has the capacity to heal themselves uh and i found that to be uh, i i truly believe that so and no what, matter what um, sorry go ahead um so i think that that itself is uh, hugely liberating mm. and what pulled you towards the profession like most of my good life decisions um my mom is the first certified transactional analyst in counseling in in asia so um and of course she was always th- talking about it at home and doing her little side <laughs> <laughs> so I, i remember growing up you know we always asked so how are you feeling and uh any life experience we go through it's okay to go through the life experience and sometimes it really annoys my sister and i because uh she'll say so now what have you learned from it and sometimes you just want to bitch about the situation and you just like uh really and, and so we have to give some learnings from this horrible experience that we've been through so yeah so i so, so that was what uh, drew me towards it i started it um I started training uh because I want to do a uh, sort of you can do it just for personal development and that's why I, that's mm. how I started but then um it gets addictive once you figure out patterns and scary sometimes because you figure yeah. out patterns in yourself you figure out patterns in other people and um sometimes you can't hide behind the bullshit because you sort of know what's happening <laughs> uh so that's scary too but yeah so when you say patterns can we talk a little bit about the patterns that you see within yourself because I, i can't ask you what patterns you see with your patients so what kind of patterns do you see within yourself i think uh there's there's so there's something uh, about psychological games and we all play it uh all the time uh but there's something called the drama triangle which is um and we all do that too 
you persecute mm-hmm. someone then you rescue them sometimes you're the victim and i've always been very drawn to it because um i think i grew up believing that when you wanted to help someone um when you're this helpful person who's always ready to help it's actually not the the other person's need it's actually your need to uh be relevant and to uh be needed uh so someone may, may not have even asked you for help and that is a game in itself so it's really interesting um, that itself is very interesting <laughs> so I, i mean i i i've been a classic guest you have always been the one to be like yeah I'll, i'll help out i'll help out and then i've slowly been asking myself is is it that person's need to be helped or is it my need to be needed by that person um i was wondering so you attest to the fact that you are you know emotionally and professionally mentally to your mom and the role that yes. she has played in your life right yes. now a fair bit of that i'm assuming also comes from your mom coming from up to her background her professional background right so you know that there's a claim to you know people to they say that just get therapy you might not have a issue you know because there's a misconception that only if you have mental issues do you go for therapy there's a misconception that you need trauma to go for therapy in fact we've had a guest speak about us to it as well so building on that do you think that substantially helped your mom and your family also through this journey because your mom knew how to address the situation and probably lead the family through it as well because she knew how to you know communicate how to build communication between the four of you and now every family can't be blessed with someone who's from that profession but then the alternative to that is that you know you need to seek therapy yourself so where do you stand on that i honestly think that everyone should have a therapist and everyone should go for therapy i'm a huge uh, advocate of going to therapy only because um i think it's a good release it's a good place i like you said you don't need to have an issue but we all have daily stressors we all have things that are on our mind we all have uh issues that we battle all the time so mm-hmm. just going to a space that is uh, objective uh where you that is uh confidential where you can just sort of vent and i think that itself is a huge release and and then you feel good and you come back and and then you're not uh, a nuisance to the next person as well because you're not <laughs> tapping your issues on, on and that's topic. very important actually yeah i have personally yeah. felt that <laughs> so dipti today yeah. when you uh, look back at the mm-hmm. last decade and counting mm-hmm. you know learning to live with atopic dermatitis uh, your transition your transition into your career choice right now and how you're also helping other people today what are your biggest learnings your top 3 learnings i think uh, number 1 is um authenticity uh, there is no uh, you can't replace authenticity and it always um comes out and i've i've really witnessed this in my life that um sometimes you know people you you're being so real and you're being so honest and people don't take it in that spirit i think the second is uh that if whether you have issues or i mean one um problem that most people battle with is their sense of self worth and their sense of adequacy i've witnessed it across age groups across uh, cultures across any i mean almost everyone has some some issue with self worth and adequacy and i think the third thing is um this is something that i really endorse uh and that is to just be kind because mm. i think and to be genuinely kind because i think uh the world needs more of that not to sound like uh, some miss universe answer or something <laughs> like it's not huh? <laughs> it's real because we don't practice it enough we just say it and genuine kindness is what is missing more than anything else and i think it goes a long long way so it's something that's very very dear to me Mm. Nice. So, 
what is your message to individuals who are struggling with body issues on a daily basis like somebody very young or somebody even in their 40s and 50s because all of us consistently feel inadequate in many ways you know and we we always talk to ourselves the most negatively so what is your biggest like your most i guess important message to individuals who are struggling with body issues i think first is to acknowledge that you have an issue and do not um mm. sort of skirt around it or push it under the carpet to first say that okay this is something that i am battling with and once you do that to figure out um the other side what what okay you have this but what is on the other side what what is something special about you and to just focus on that after that and i think then this sort of um takes a back seat but to definitely address it and work on it while also because i i really believe that everyone has something special about them and um if you focus on that uh that's what's important yeah i love that <laughs> that is that true and it's so true because today you know much like we spoke about at the beginning of the conversation um and a lot of friends who also shared your profile with they also said the same thing that they were like what is really stopping us and why do we put so much of importance to validation and acceptance from strangers online that we are so scared to be ourselves therefore and therefore we give in further to whatever we think are shortcomings in us because we'd rather listen to the eight people who are saying something wrong than probably the 20 people who are saying that no you know this is works for you and just trust yourself more than so yeah, that's absolutely bang on um yeah i think it goes back to actually what uh, dipti said earlier that the moment you accept yourself other people do and then whatever yeah. other people say matters a lot less so absolutely i think two things you said which were extremely impactful one was the moment you accept yourself or start accepting yourself what other people say will have less weightage and the second one which was so on point is there is a difference between self soothing and self sabotage and that is very true can be a t-shirt yeah <laughs> so uh deeply to kind of uh, wrap this all together now there's this question that we ask which is what would be your advice you know to everyone listening and to anyone who passes on that how can we as a community and as a society around the world how can we raise the bar and be better for it i think uh, even something like instagram i think if we uh, stop uh, projecting an image of us and rather be who we are that would give other people permission to be who they are and i think that's really important because um actually something that happened to me so you, i was mindlessly scrolling and i came across this profile mm. and perfect pictures perfect abs perfect mm. holidays and i was like oh my god this and i'm and i'm saying this because i think it happens to all of us yeah and i have a very good memory so i sort of enlarged uh, the picture mm. and i was like oh my god like i have where have i seen this person mm. and it was like divine intervention because the very next day um i just walked into to the office and this girl was sitting there oh. and uh, i was like okay and i literally felt like god was like had delivered a personal message to me that yeah. look every yeah. single person <laughs> has their <laughs> issues wow so yeah <laughs> that was a very quick message so I, basically your mental health equalizes you yeah <laughs> i mean what are the chances that this person would land up in my office yeah so, also that sounds like the opening of a romantic comedy almost yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's yeah mm. you're right so it yeah, just put that is perfect perspective for me and i think also i i really believe the more you give yourself permission to be who you are you're giving another person and i i think we should do that across i mean and we're living in not the best times uh so it's really important i feel 
uh, and people are battling all kinds of issues so it's so important to you know allow i think when you allow yourself that permission you're really modeling that for another person yeah i love that because that is something i really also try to practice myself i've been trying to so beautiful very yeah thank Did you, you so much deeply amazing having you for your and thank you for taking out sunday morning for us anytime and yeah so i hope you have a beautiful week and uh, thank you for spending time with us thank you for being on our podcast and a shout out to krishna the world needs more people like <laughs> krishna we so sure. love you yeah <laughs> you are the best friend everybody needs <laughs> yes. going to be so embarrassed i better warn her <laughs> See, there's nothing better than embarrassing your best friend. So, oh yeah, for I, sure. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>Hey there. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Raise the Brow. Follow the podcast on Instagram and YouTube and hey, slide into our DMs <laughs> because we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to share the podcast or this very episode with anyone who you think needs this in their life.